كتاب الله دستوري كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا بسنته جلا نوري بهدي الحق أرشدنا الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا بسنته جلا نوري بهدي الحق أرشدنا كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا بسنته جلا نوري بهدي الحق أرشدنا لزمت محاضن القرآن فذكر الله يسعدنا عرفنا إخوة الإيمان وللأخيار صحبتنا تميزنا بكل الفن وتجمع محبتنا وصدق القول نعرفه وخير الخلق يعرفنا تعالينا على الأحقاد مع المخطي تسامحنا تنافسنا بحفظ الآي وهذا ما يميزنا كتاب الله دستوري كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا بسنته جلا نوري Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and welcome to ICRA's virtual open house. We are so pleased you could join us on this beautiful afternoon. My name is Nicole Damani, and I am the Administrative Assistant for All Academy Program with ICRA Institute. On behalf of all of the ICRA team, I welcome you today. We at ICRA are so excited to introduce to the community two new amazing programs to our Academy lineup. One, our first one, is ICRA Academy Full-Time HIPS program for both boys and girls. And very excitingly, ICRA Academy's Part-Time Girls HIPS program. We have a dynamic duo leading these two new programs. We have Usted Usama and Usted Sidra Bakai. They will be introducing themselves to the community shortly, but first we will have a word from uh, Brother Ahmed Bakran, followed by Brother Bilal Bakai. Bismillah. Thank you, uh, Sister Nicole. Um, I wanted to first uh, welcome everybody uh, here today. Uh, this is a, a really amazing time for our organization, and um, it's a culmination really of years of efforts and works as we have uh, done within this community. Uh, this organization uh, began with humble beginnings back in 2012. Um, as you may uh, remember, if you were part of this community, uh, we did many traveling seminars in various uh, in the area and we slowly um, pivoted and supplemented and started doing work in our community, doing different uh, social and inter-community programs with our ICRA community division. And then we evolved a few years later with the launch of our uh, part-time five-year boys HIFS program uh, that has been running for several years. And we've also added on um, several programs within our academy division. And alhamdulillah, this, uh, now we're here at a juncture in our community where we are able to offer a full-time program for our community members. And I, me personally, I grew up in this area. There wasn't really any masajid uh, in the area until I was probably in my uh, you know, uh, middle school years. And a lot of the, 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 the community members that had children that wanted to do HIFS or do any kind of higher studies uh, Islamically would have to travel out of state, out of country in some instances. Um, and we are really blessed today to have a facility and have the talent and uh, uh, of, of instructors that can actually um, really uh, encourage uh, 
growth and uh, and the studies of our, our dean here in 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 our in our backyard essentially. So we are really proud of uh, our team, our com the community support, um, and and we were really blessed to have everyone here today. And we I hope that everyone will enjoy the program and um, and please ask any questions. We're going to be uh, available to you um, throughout this program um, via the Facebook live feed and uh, the YouTube uh, chat, inshallah. Thank you, Jazakallah Khair, and I hope you enjoy the, uh, the rest of the, the virtual open house. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, now we will hear from Brother Bilal Bikai. Uh, welcome everybody again. Uh, we are so excited uh, to have you join us today. We have a great lineup of events of uh, different programs and, uh, and our staff that are going to be sharing with you uh, how excited we are about some of the new programs that we're rolling and some of the existing ones uh, that you may, may not be aware of. I just wanted to bring to your attention an important aspect of what we have been doing as an organization through Iqra Institute and Iqra Academy in our community. Uh, one of the, the goals that you can probably uh, uh, know just from walking into Iqra Institute and the facility that we uh, try to work on is Ihsan, really trying to put our best foot forward in any activity that we roll out to the community, whether it was the uh, seminars that we were offering to the community uh, or the part-time HIST program, which we first started, or the after-school program, which has also been uh, going on for about four or five years now. But um, the, the, the legwork that's involved behind each of these programs is, is immense. We do a, a great amount of a detailed study about the need for this program within the community. We send out assessments. We pick a focus group to understand how best we can implement uh, that program within the community and how it can be most effective uh, and, and enjoyed by our community members. And then once we once we understand our scope, we understand what that program could entail, then we, we look for the best instructors that could be uh, uh, effective at providing that uh, uh, information to the community at large and really be the best person to lead the, that effort uh, or that Institute. And so when you see any of these programs that are already existing or have are being rolled out now, uh, you should rest assured that, you know, there's been months and months of preparation, um, a lot of uh, defining of the scope, a lot of uh, creating the curriculums uh, before it ever comes in front of you uh, and it gets presented in front of you. And alhamdulillah, uh, most, if not all of our instructors are local, are um, are from the area who has spent a good amount of time uh, in, the, in the area and are familiar with the community because we feel that the, one of the best ways that uh, people really connect with the instructor is by developing a personal relationship. Um, so as Ahmed uh, mentioned, we're going to have a great uh, series of uh, programs uh, that are going to be rolled out to you. So stay tuned. Uh, Jazakallah khair again for joining uh, and inshallah, uh, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to put them in the chat box or uh, send an email. Uh, we're more than uh, welcome, uh, uh, looking forward to trying to answer uh, everything for you guys, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Bilal and Ahmed, for that. Um, and we really appreciate your leadership and diligence in bringing ICRA programming to the community. And um, we're so blessed to have you guys on the ICRA team. And at this time, uh, one of the many highlights of this year or for ICRA uh, grow, as we grow is that we were able to move into a new facility that is much larger this past January. Um, and at this time, I would like to share with you um, some images of the facility, just so you can get an idea if you were not able to come and visit with us, especially uh, in the midst of this uh, pandemic. So uh, there you can see this is our address. Our new address is 2490 General Amistad Avenue and we're Suite 304 in West Norton. It also can come up as Audubon and Norristown. So if you're ever, you know, planning to come visit with us, um, please keep that in mind that the area is uh, ever developing. So sometimes um, 
the address location will come up with those different options. Um, this is the front of our building, how it looks like. Uh, we are so happy now. We have six classrooms. We came from a building that only had three prior. We have a large musella area, a women's private musella area, kitchen, two bathrooms with a changing station, eating area, and a rear outdoor play area, which is essential for us for the academy programs. Uh, this is the musella area. Uh, you can see there's like a large monitor, pr uh, prayer timings and all of that. On the next slide. Oh, this is our front lobby. This is uh, where the children will come in and also is our um, elementary or pre-K and kindergarten um, classrooms in the front here. This is the opposite once you enter into the building, what you would see. And uh, these are inside the classrooms for pre-K, kindergarten, first grade. This um, slide shows the classrooms for the um, elementary grades and also our middle school. Um, this next year coming up, 2021, we will be going to the eighth grade. This shows the uh, private Musella area for the women and also comes with a TV monitor. So you can also see the tab area and also the main Musella area. And uh, this classroom here, we house for our Arabic and Quran classrooms. Um, it's just easier to have a room dedicated where they can have all the materials that they need and learning, uh, learning um, samples and everything that they need. This is our lunch area in the rear of the building. And this is our wonderful outdoor space. We were able to really um, lock down this area to have it. Uh, we have two basketball courts and a little min mini one for our little kids. We have um, two large picnic tables, two smaller ones for kids, plenty of space and like little activity things for the children to do. So we're really, really so happy to be able to offer that to the kids. And now, without further ado, I would like to introduce to you our lead instructor for our newest program, which is the full-time HIPS program, and that is open to boys and girls. Uh, we have Usted Usama Bakai. He's going to be the lead instructor, and uh, I will let him take it away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm very excited to be here with you all uh, and at the launch of this beautiful program, the full time HIV program that is available to both uh, boys and girls, adults and children of all ages. Uh, it's, it's very, very exciting because this is an opportunity for us to uh, bring a much needed program locally to the community. Where I, as myself included, we had to travel uh, to other areas in order to have this opportunity. But now it's a huge blessing of Allah SWT that he has given us um, the, uh, the students in the, the, that are interested, the families interested in pursuing this noble endeavor that they're able to do so right within their, in their local community. Um, so right off the bat, uh, you guys, whoever's watching is probably already knows the virtue of uh, becoming half of the Quran. Allah SWT has a special rank for them and on the Yom Al-Qiyamah, Allah SWT will ask the individual who has memorized the Qur'an to recite Yom, on Yom Al-Qiyamah and their rank will raise according to how much they recite. So the more we know of the Qur'an, the higher our rank will be in Jannah bi -idhnillah. So it's a beautiful opportunity for us to gain the, uh, the, the barakah that Allah SWT has put in the Qur'an and bring it into our lives. Uh, so uh, another key point that I want to talk about is the the sunnah that we have, uh, many people overlook, the Prophet ﷺ was a hafid himself. So imagine that. So uh, those that are going to be dedicated with us in this program, day in and day out, their schedule will be following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the huge uh, sunnah of becoming a someone who has memorized the Qur'an in their heart. So before we get any further, let me introduce myself. My name is Usama Baqai. Um, I have been out of the scene for a number, number of years, about five and a half, six years. I've been away studying in the blessed city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Madinat al-Munawwara. 
uh, where I'm uh, currently, where I have graduated now, alhamdulillah, from the College of uh, Sharia in the Islamic University of Medina. So uh, my journey in Islamic studies began in, when, when I went to Canada to a boarding school. Remember, we didn't have this opportunity available back then. Um, so uh, I, I went all the way to Canada to a boarding school where they had uh, Islamic studies, uh, Quranic studies in the morning and the evening, t- the afternoon time was dedicated to secular studies, similar to the program that we have uh, laid out for the students here. So I memorized the Quran in Canada and um, the path kept rolling, alhamdulillah, and I uh, came to Medina. And while in Medina, I had the opportunity to study with the scholars in Masjid Nabawi and uh, earn my uh, ijazah in recitation, which I have a, a continuous chain of narrations where I learned, my teacher learned from his teacher who learned from his teacher, all the way to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the correct pronunciation and the correct recitation of the Qur'an. Um, so uh, that's just a little bit about myself and now let's jump into the program. The goal of this program is to develop committed, lifelong learning profile who memorize, understand and implement the Qur'an in their daily lives and who are contributing citizens and community leaders. And, you know, this is just the memorizing the Quran is just the, the first step. It's a lifelong journey of um, coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, developing that relationship with the Book of Allah. So the, the, um, the objective of this program, obviously, is to get that first level of memorizing the entire Quran with its proper recitation and with strong retention and also um, mastering the rules of the Jews. We'll expand upon, upon this a little later. And another objective of this program is to learn the spiritual benefits of the Qur'an and its practical application. It's not enough that we've memorized the book. It's, uh, we have to go above and beyond that and implement that into our lives. We have to become motivated individuals who are constantly growing and coming closer to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our actions and through our ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what all this, this program wants to be a holistic approach, inshallah. So who is this program tailored to? Uh, so anyone that's available in the morning time, the classes are going to be from uh, 8 a.m. to about noon time. We'll go into the details about that in a little bit. But uh, it's open, to, available to anyone. But the, uh, the, the minimum age to be accepted into the program is at least eight years of age or older. Um, and there are, can be exceptions made based on the maturity, the maturity and the ability of the student. And the reason we have this age is we, uh, the, 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 the level of students we need is that are self-motivated and they're able to sit and uh, learn the Qur'an on their own because a lot of this is uh, self-discipline and spending your own time in uh, learning, the, learning and memorizing. So in order to be able to qualify for this program, you need to have a basic level of uh, fluency in reciting the Qur'an and you have to have a basic level of applying the rules of tajweed. So uh, we're not going to be starting from Alif Ba here. Uh, there are other classes available through Iqra Academy and so forth that you can uh, enroll your children in. But uh, we're looking for students who already have a proficiency th- so they can jump right in to uh, start memorizing, inshallah. Obviously, obviously, we're going to be working on the Jweed rules and Maqarij and so forth with the students while they're memorizing. Uh, and we do have the summer intensive program, uh, which we'll be discussed later on, to help those students that are almost at that level, and uh, but they want to uh, perfect their recitation so they're ready to go in the fall semester, inshallah. So let's talk about our, our approach. Uh, this program has been uh, really, we did a lot of brainstorming. We looked at all the other programs we, and we tried to find the best uh, fitting opportunity for the students that would be conducive to this environment that we're living in, in the Oaks PA area. So our approach is to have a well-designed curriculum with benchmarks and a clear roadmap. Uh, I'll discuss this in the next slide, inshallah. And we have qualified instructors and uh, a great administrative staff. They've been working very hard to put this program together. And uh, we have a motivating spiritual learning environment with emphasis on character building and leadership. As I had mentioned, uh, we want a holistic approach where we're not only create, having students memorize the Quran, but understanding what's inside the Quran and to make them make the transformative experience, inshallah. We want to focus on the uh, quality of memorization of creating hufad who retain the Qur'an and they're able to uh, keep it with them the entire life. It's, it's, uh, uh, there's many hadith that talk about this, how the Qur'an slips away. If you don't review it, if it's not in constant revision, 
is going to slip away. So we ask Allah SWT to protect us from that and whatever Quran that each and every one of us have memorized that Allah SWT makes that firm in our hearts and that we're able to keep it retained. We're also going to focus on Tajweed. Um, and a, a component that's interesting here is we're going to be cre- integrating technology into the Quranic uh, education. And I think this is going to be a really uh, neat uh, new approach where students who've already been accustomed to using technology in their daily lives will have this opportunity of uh, using that in their Quranic studies as well. So a little bit about Hiv for those who are uh, unfamiliar with the topic, with the subject area. There's a whole science. You can read, uh, there's many books about this as well, uh, about how to memorize the Quran. But basically, it's a three-step process of uh, three components that are included in this process. There's the new lesson, the recently memorized, and the revision. So these are three components. Uh, the new lesson, obviously, uh, everyone is familiar with and with what parents are most concerned with most of the time. So new lesson is very important. It's what the student memorizes uh, and recites to the teacher. The next part, I would say, is the most important aspect. It's what the student has recently memorized. The last five or ten lessons, they ha- are supposed to review that, make that perfect, and then recite that to the teacher as well. And what this does is that it keeps the new lesson constantly fresh in the mind of the student. So it, it, it goes from the recent, it goes from their uh, immediate memory to their sustained memory where it becomes uh, a, a part of their long-term memory. And then obviously the most, the, the, the key component that um, is a revision where the student will review the juz that they have previously memorized. And I, I wanna highlight again, the emphasis on the recently memorized when we're dealing with the students, we'll go to much de- greater detail, but the recently memorized basically it makes sure that your new lesson, it becomes really strong. If you're recently memorized is strong, then your new lesson became strong and your revision will become strong. So uh, we, we use this, this, this uh, three component process for Hiv and it's a traditional method that has been successful for hundreds and hundreds of years. So let's talk about a little bit about the milestones and testings and the means that we're going to have to keep the students in check. So after each student can, completes a juz of the Quran, there are 30 ajza. So once they complete one entire juz, um, they will be tested. They will not. They will stop their new lesson, and they're going to be tested on the entire juz. That could take a day, two days, depending on how strong the student's new lesson uh, recently memorized was. So if they kept up to par with their recently memorized, then this test will be very easy for them. It will be a, a walk in the park. They'll be able to get it out in no time. After every five ajza that the student uh, completes their memorization in, inshallah, there will be a cum- cumulative test. And for this, uh, we, the student would take a break from their new lesson for a, a period of a couple of days, depending on how good the revision is. And this is really to make sure that each step that they're taking forward is not a step backwards as well. So you can continue memorizing on one end, but if you're forgetting it on the back end, you're not really moving forward. You're just going in circles. Uh, may Allah SWT protect us from that. And uh, remember the end goal is to have memorize the entire Quran in, their, in its totality. And that is only achieved uh, uh, once you have a level of understanding of how good the student has re- retained their memorization. So the program will be complete, considered complete when the student does uh, three cycles of the entire Quran to the teacher. So uh, moving on to the next component, we're going to be talking about how we're going to integrate technology into this uh, program. So the first step we're going to use is the Quran app. It is uh, to help students that may learn through audio skills versus just reading. So we're going to have an app where they can listen to the Qari on repetition and that breaks down syllable by syllable, the pronunciation as well. Um, And they can also test themselves, uh, record what they recite within the same app, record what their lesson is, and they can hear it back and they can fix any mistakes that they have while looking inside, inshallah. And the second really cool, interesting feature that we want to incorporate into this program is the virtual student log. So as a teacher, uh, I would be able to put into a log that the student, their new lesson is from ayah 110 to ayah 115, five, five ayahs. And then that will show up in the student's portal where the parents will have access to that and the student will have access to that as well. So it's a good way to track progress as well. It's a good way to see where uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the semester, at the end of the month, uh, we'll be constantly be in communication with parents as well, inshallah, to see where the student is struggling where they're excelling and where we can, uh, what we can do to mit- uh, mitigate that, inshallah. 
Uh, and as, as we discussed, the, the, we want this program to be a holistic approach of going beyond just memorizing the Quran. So in order to accomplish that, we've incorporated two days a week of Tarbiya sessions. These are short 20-minute uh, sessions in which the, uh, the students will be benefiting from spiritual guidance, learning about uh, things related to the Quran, relating to the life uh, of, of a proper Muslim should uh, adopt and how they should hold themselves to a stand, higher standard now that they are a half of the Quran. And uh, it encourages students to adopt Quranic morals in their lives. And it, it's short sessions, but they're meant to uh, build upon one another and to inshallah leave an impact on the student. So uh, let's look at the sample day, how we would approach this program. So it's jam packed, <laughs> uh, but it's for the betterment of the student. As you can see with the day starts at 8 a.m. And uh, we have Quranic studies from eight until about 12.45. And then the students will have a, a gap for dhuhr and lunch. And then right after that, they are jumping into their secular studies, which will be managed through Iqra Academy. So the first portion of the day is uh, where the student comes in and hopefully they've already memorized their new lesson. They'll arrive and they'll just polish up the last few uh, mistakes that they may have and recite it to the teacher. And then they will go back and start uh, reviewing their recently memorized. And then they will come up to the teacher again and recite that portion. And then at 9.45, they will have a break of 15 minutes or so. They can uh, get some of that energy out, uh, run around, freshen up, do a fresh wudu, inshallah. At 10 o'clock, we will reconvene. So this is a hypothetical situation at, as of yet. It has not been confirmed. Um, but those students that are uh, part of the PALC's academic studies program, they have to have a live session two days a week um, with the, uh, the, the PALCs. Uh, so they would have a, whatever time the PALCs dedicates, uh, we would adopt that into the schedule, inshallah. So those students that have to do that, at that time, they would use this time to go and uh, for that one hour session, go attend the PALCs meeting and then come back to the Quran class, inshallah. And the remaining students are who are maybe their full-time HIV students are not doing the secular studies, or maybe they had a the, their their PALCs meeting was on a different day. Uh, they would continue uh, with the uh, uh, with the Quran and they would do the revision at this time. And revision takes a long, long time. Uh, this is where a lot of the, a lot of the students' days going to be going into. A lot of uh, parents think that memorization of the Quran is just strictly memorizing, memorizing, memorizing. Uh, it's a bigger, greater process than that. It's as I had mentioned, the components, and they're equally important, and we need to keep stressing the importance of revision and um, recently memorized as those are key components, and a lot of time will be dedicated to that. Um, at 11 o'clock, we'll have the supplement sessions. As I had mentioned, two days a week will be tarbiya, and the other two days, we'll have the juid classes. So in this, at this time, we'll focus on uh, learning the actual rules. So during the, actual, uh, during the class time, we'll be focusing on fixing the student's recitation and fixing up minor mistakes and so forth, helping them with makharaj. But this time we will dedicate to learning and implementing the actual rules and practicing them uh, to have the academic side of the tajweed as well. Um, and then the students will have a 15 minute break uh, from 11.35 to 12.45, they'll continue on with their revision. And if they, if they finished early, they can get a head start on their next day's uh, lesson. As I had mentioned, we would have the dhuhr and lunch break at this time. Students would have about 45 minutes to eat their food and uh, pray their salat al dhuhr. And uh, after that, the Iqra Academy would uh, take over and the students would uh, do their secular st studies managed through the Iqra administration. So as you had seen in the previous slide, this is a jam-packed schedule. It's not meant for any, everybody. Uh, so you need students that are dedicated, they're motivated. You have about three, four hours of Quran in your schedule. So you need to have a strong relationship with the Quran. Obviously that can be developed, but if someone has no relationship to begin with, uh, you might want to pick a easier program to begin with because this, this, is a high, this is a high standard that we're expecting the students to uh, jump into this for four hours. But inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah in their time and efforts and help them in uh, staying motivated through that, inshallah. So we need students that are committed and motivated to memorize the Quran. It's difficult uh, if the parents are forcing the student into the program. I advise that you really talk to your children and make sure that they're on board and that they don't feel that they're being compelled because you, you don't want to invest so much time 
and and, and for them to invest so much energy for us the administration the, the teachers to invest so much energy into the students and then you realize at the end of the day that the, the program wasn't meant for them and not everyone has to become a half at the end of the day it is a huge huge virtue and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does have a huge reward written for it but uh there are other ways to be a, a contributing Muslim in the Ummah. So I, I do advise you to pray istikhara, uh, do shura, feel free to reach out to me uh, regarding questions and so forth. But as far as expectations for students, they need to be able to study independently. So as a teacher, I'll be sitting there, I'll be listening to students individually, listening to their new lesson. H however, the remaining students that are, they need to continue practicing their, uh, their lesson, preparing for, for, for their own uh, recitation. So they need to be able to uh, stay focused on their own without having someone watch over them constantly. While the teacher will be there to monitor the class, the, the onus is on the student to continue reading and stay motivated throughout the process. And uh, again, their students are expected to have an hour or two hours in, on weekdays, even after they arrive home, they need to use the time in the evening to memorize their new lesson and be prepared to come in the next morning to recite the lesson. And the, the, uh, a really important component is utilizing the weekend. I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, Friday after you get home. That whole time, I remember in Madrasa when we were back in uh, boarding school, that was our prime time to memorize as much as we could because come Monday morning, we want to be ready in front of the teacher, ready to recite extra because we had those extra hours of um, preparation time to, to learn more new lesson. So uh, another component is students are expected to avoid all things that may negatively impact their hibd. And we can discuss that later on in detail uh, with the students that are going to be going with this program. Uh, there is a big expectation from parents. It's not a program where you can just drop off the students uh, and think, Khalas, my job is done. Uh, the parents must play an active role in creating a supportive environment for their child through this blessed journey. It's, it's, it's not easy for the child and they need the parents support in this. So the parents are expected to provide a structured environment for their children that will help their education. That will help them foster an environment where they feel comfortable reciting inside the home, where the parents are allowing them the, the time to dedicate to reciting and memorizing their new lesson and do their revision. And you know, even listening to them, uh, let's say they think they're ready, they, they, uh, they, just, they wanna review, their, they wanna recite to you a couple pages to make sure they got it down, you as parents uh, may need to be able to step up and help them out in that process. Ah, the age old question, how long does it take to become a hafil? And wallahi, if there was an answer out there, I would love to give it to you. But unfortunately, it uh, it differs from student to student. Every student is different. Allah SWT blesses uh, people in different ways. Some people are met, uh, blessed with the, uh, strong memory. They can read it one time and it's, it's there. It's going to stick there for the rest of their life. Other people, like myself, <laughs> and uh, other people have a challenge. They have to repeat the same verse 10, 15, 20, 40 times before it, it sticks in their head. So the process is different for everyone. The time frame is different for everyone. I know people that memorize the Quran in one year. I know the people that spent memorizing the Quran in six years. And alhamdulillah, we have a structured program where the student is able to develop, uh, put their full effort forward and the environment con is conducive to them and uh, to, to helping them achieve this goal as soon as possible. But uh, there is no fixed time frame. It's upon the student. For example, my friend, he has three kids. He has a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, and an 8-year-old. And the 10-year-old uh, the, the, the knows 17 juz, while the 12-year-old, who is two years older than him, who has been memorizing Quran for two years more than him, only knows 10 juz. So you can see that uh, it's different, and they're from the same parents, right? So it's it's not something that's hereditary. It's not it's something that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blesses with on, to people in different uh, capacities. So uh, please be patient with your if you do put your students in this. Realize that this is a long endeavor and it's different for each student. But we will keep keep you up to date. Uh, we will let you know about their progress and see how the timeline is for each student. Inshallah. So how do you get your uh, children enrolled, how do you get yourself enrolled? If you are interested, the admission, admission process is very simple. There's an application you can fill online. After that, we will have an interview, one-on-one, um, -on -one, see where you stand with the Quran, how your recitation is, if this program is the fit for you, 
uh, or if there's uh, or, if we, or if you need the summer intensive and so forth. And we will also be meeting with the parents uh, for those that are uh, uh, younger children. We'll also be meeting with the parents to make sure that the family is able to house that environment where the student will be able to thrive and be able to memorize the Quran. And another th component is those students that are planning to be in the HIV program and the academic program with Iqra, they have to um, apply and be accepted in, into PALCS. Um, I do encourage you, if you are planning on taking that route, to be as early as uh, possible on that, inshallah. Uh, and Sister Nicole will go into details regarding the admission process and so forth. So if you hang out for hang or hang around for that, inshallah. So I was talking about this a little earlier. The summer intensive program is designed for those students that want to have that extra boost and create that relationship with the Quran before they go into the uh, the dive into the deep end, as I would like to say. So it's going to be starting from June 29th. Uh, excuse me, yeah, June 29th all the way until August 14th. It's about two months. Um, and we're going to be meeting five days a week from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, I would actually highly encourage everyone that is interested in this program to uh, join the summer intensive. And that way you can have, you can get a gauge about yourself if this program is meant for you or not. And for, uh, for those that are really committed, it will help you, it will give you a boost. It will give you that extra jump that you need um, to start the program running when it comes to September, inshallah. And for some students, we may even make it mandatory uh, depending on their level. So if they, if they are struggling with some letters of uh, or uh, struggling with the Jewish rules and so forth, we might ask them to uh, really consider joining the summer intensive uh, before they join the, the full-time program, inshallah. So some key dates to keep in mind for those that are, uh, inshallah, committed to this program. May 22nd, alhamdulillah, the registration opened and we already have applications. Uh, I'm very excited about this, but uh, I would encourage all of you who are considering the program, apply as soon as possible. We do have a limit. Um, in order to maximize the, uh, the output, we need to have a uh, student to teacher ratio that's conducive for the classroom environment, small classroom size, so the teacher is able, able to give the attention to the student as needed. So uh, there is a limit and uh, I encourage you to apply as soon as possible so we can uh, get that sorted out earlier than later. The interviews will start June, 2nd, 20, June 20th. So um, apply, that's coming up next week. Uh, if you do apply later on, we, we will try our best to uh, have your interview at a later date, but I do encourage you to uh, apply later, sooner than later. And the summer intensive, as I had mentioned, is from to, uh, June 29th to August 14th. And the actual program will, will be starting uh, September 1st, inshallah. Uh, over here, we just have a quick rundown of the tuition. You can take a look at that, inshallah. Um, and the, uh, I, I know the situation is, uh, is, is not too good in America. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the pandemic and alleviate the community uh, and the Muslim community and all those that are suffering and allow us to congregate once again and uh, make us amongst those that are uh, committed to the masjid and coming regu regularly without fear, without uh, any, any harm befalling us because of our uh, undertakings. So just to be clear, the program will continue inshallah despite the COVID-19 situation. So Alhamdulillah Iqra is doing their best uh, in researching and uh, looking at what's best for the students and for the families. Uh, there's plan A, B, and C. Inshallah, they will go into details about that. But the program will continue, uh, even if it has to continue online. We'll use an online platform to uh, uh, continue the program, and uh, the students will still be able to do their academics portion through PALCS and then do the HIFT portion with myself and the IPRA team, inshallah. Um, so that is, it. that is it for my presentation. Jazakallah khairan ahsan jaza. Uh, I am here to help you in your decision making. I am fully available to assist you in any way I can. Uh, and whether it be asking about uh, your child specifically or asking general questions about the program, uh, feel free to uh, ask questions. You can write them in the comment section or you can uh, email us or call us later on, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan ahsan jaza. I encourage all of you to for those that are seriously considering this short program, uh, do ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, is this the best 
path for my child. Ask your children, do shura, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, barakah in all your efforts and endeavors. And I look forward to meeting all of you soon, inshallah. Ustad Usama, thank you so much for that overview. And um, just a quick thing I want to say is to see this program come from, you know, a request from a community member to, um, you know, on the agenda for a meeting to its development, to its now rolling out um, for application and admissions is really like a blessing from Allah to let this kind of programming come to the community where, as you mentioned before, we don't have to venture to another country, to another state to have that. We have it, um, as Bilal mentioned, in our backyard. So um, as Ustad Usama mentioned, the program has two components to it. You can either um, include your secular education with that through our PALCS programming, or you can um, have it just as solid as the HIPS program. So now we're going to introduce to you Sister Elizabeth Tonin. She is the director for the full-time school. Um, she can give you a brief overview of how PALCS works and what that um, details. So Sister Elizabeth. Assalamu alaikum everyone, alhamdulillah. Um, I'm better known as Sister Ellie and I've had the pleasure of being the director of Igra Academy for the past two years. And I've had the pleasure of working in Islamic education in some part for the past 20 years. So alhamdulillah, Muslim kids are my passion and giving them a great education with lots of exposure. So if you are enrolling into the ICRA Academy program, which partners with the HIFS program, our students will be enrolled in PALCS. PALCS is Pennsylvania Leadership Charter School. It is ranked the number one best online school in PA for the past three years. That's why we chose it. Students will log in every day to complete online schoolwork. Courses were created and they're taught by PA certified teachers. And the courses align with the PA Common Core Standards. So if you're enrolling with us, you will be in PALCS. What PALCS expectations are for students that ICRA has as well is four to five hour day. Students are expected to practice self-regulation. Students are expected to be able to independently log on, view their lessons for the day and get started. Students are also responsible for their laptops, materials, any things that come from as PALCS as well. Now, students' expectation, ICRA operates under the true assumption that every student is unique and has different skills and abilities. No students are alike. So mistakes are expected in this learning journey and encouraged as they present learning opportunities. So even though we have this online learning module, 100% on all assignments is not the ultimate goal. What our ultimate goal for our students at ICRA is to have authentic learning and develop a growth mindset. So we want our students to be able to take risks and step out of their comfort zone. So sometimes parents become a little reluctant on online learning, but in ICRA, we, what we have experienced, this works twofold. Our students are able to have sort of the best of both worlds. We can have a great Islamic environment, and then we can also have a great secular education as well. So what are our student expectations? We want our students to demonstrate exemplary Islamic behavior, conduct, the, conduct themselves with respect, integrity, and dignity at all times. We demonstrate age-appropriate maturity and responsibility, develop self-regulation and independence. And our ultimate goal truly is to have self-advocacy. We want our students to be able to advocate for themselves. And this ties in hand with Brother Osama, what he said in regard to the students being motivated doing their work. That's the same thing that will happen with the PALCS work. If a student needs some help, they need to be able to speak up and say, I'm not, you know, I need some more support with this and we're there for them. So what does ICRA offer in regard to classroom support? We offer small group lessons with ICRA staff. So Monday, Wednesday will be English, language, arts, and social studies. Tuesday and Thursday will focus on math and science. We have writing lessons that will be scheduled based on you know, timing and availability. If any student needs it, we have a certified Wilson reading specialist available. All our staff have already worked in schools, public schools and pri 
private schools and have come with great experience and they're you familiar with using the PALCs. So if you're considering this option, I think it's great for our students. Now, if any of our student comes to PALC and something's not going well, they need extra support, we have that support from PALCs. They have differentiated virtual lessons. They have an Eagles program, which they do assess every student. So this is not just a one size fits all. PALCs individualizes learning and we've experienced that at ICRA because we can see it. If a student needs extra support, they'll give it to them. If a student needs enrichment, they'll also have access to that. They have homework help that's nightly. Pauk's teacher's office hours by appointment. So if there's a specific thing that a student needs help on, as well as their ICRA teachers, they have access to their Pauk's teachers. And they do offer other educational sources, for example, online learning tools that help them with math, reading, some also as well for science and social studies. So working together with Pauk's really gives a great benefit to our students at ICRA. So that's basically our overview of how PALCs will work with the HIPS program. So we have PALCs. It's work. We've done it for two years. Our students have been successful. But one of the best things that ICRA offers is Islamic environment. And I truly believe that students need to see a reflection of themselves in the classroom. So it is a blessing for students to be able to come to school to make their salat, make dua, and all these things that you can't find in other locations. So sometimes as parents, we always wonder what's the best choice. But you know, at the end of the day, I strongly feel as though we can get extracurricular for other things, but you cannot get extracurricular for your soul. So we have to have our students, you know, strongly grounded in their deen, inshallah, and being part of Islamic education, I see that. And just recently, I've had the pleasure to see some of my Muslim students that I taught in kindergarten are actually graduating as college graduates, married, still practicing this deen. So, you know. Alhamdulillah for ICRA Academy to pursue this venture. You know, it's hard work, but at the end of the day, it's worth it. And it's a blessing to see the fruits of your labor. So inshallah, you know, I can't wait to see what comes out of this HIFS program. Thank you, Sister Ellie, for that. Um, now we're going to go to some questions here that I see um, on our chat. Uh, just be patient with me one second. I will do my best to um, read your question and then either answer myself or direct it to the person that it could best be answered. Um, one question, um, if you would like to talk to me or contact the school, you can do so after our um, program is over. Obviously, I'm here, so I won't be able to answer the call. On. But um, one of the questions that you have here is, what is the recommendation you have on what memorization schedule they should follow at home along with the full-time HIFS program? Um, I will give that to Oster Usama. Uh, so the question regarding the uh, schedule for the students to follow at home, in including the full-time HIFS program, so uh, ideally, the student should spend the time between Maghrib and Aisha um, for that, either dedicating that to Quran. So I, I'm not sure what time uh, Maghrib is back in Pennsylvania currently, but over here in Medina, we're talking about from 7.30 to about uh, 9 o'clock. So you have an hour and a half that time period we could, uh, because it, it kind of constrains it now that the student has, uh, that from Maghrib, I got to sit down. I'm going to pray Maghrib with my family or at the masjid and so forth. And then from that time until Isha Sadaq, the Adhan for Isha happens, an hour and a half, I will be sitting and doing my Quran. So uh, that's one method. Uh, another way to do it is, uh, it, it, it varies on the student, right? Some students, after they come home, uh, they feel a bit tired, they need to relax. So after about an hour, let's say six o'clock, um, yeah, and get an hour in of Quran, or some students like to break up. So it, it, it varies from person to person, but I would encourage having at least an hour and a half, two hours of Quran. Um, if you're able to break it up, Alhamdulillah, maybe do an hour once you get home and an hour before bed. And uh, during the years of uh, when you're memorizing Quran, this time is where you're dedicated to this purpose. You have a vision in mind. You, you're, you realize the students 
uh, that you're so focused on the Quran, you tend to forget things. Other uh, other things seem less important. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala puts barakah in your mind and your mindset that uh, uh, you, you don't get distracted as easily. Okay, another question here so I hope is: Can adult? Oh, I'm sorry. Another question we had was: Can adults enroll in the part-time his program? Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, you can. Uh, yes. When Brother um, Abdullah comes on, he will even explain to you like some major accomplishments that uh, we've had with adults in our program. Um, and then another question that came through, um, and maybe Brother Osama, you can answer. They're asking about the program for a five-year-old. Um, just from like the PALC um, part of it, they would have to be able to be entering into kindergarten to do the PALC's portion of, of the full-time school, if that is something that um, they were gonna be entering in. But I do recall that um, Usted Osama did mention that the program would have to have like an exceptional um, uh, allowance for somebody that's under the age of eight. So if you wanna just elaborate more on that, Usted Osama? Yes. Yeah, so uh, the, the youngest age that I was okay with was eight years old, but um, after discussing with the rest of the team, and we, we are ready to make exceptions for seven-year-olds, uh, but anything below that, I, I think it's a bit challenging to uh, host them within the environment, uh, the classroom environment, because uh, younger children do need more one-on-one -on -one attention. So unfortunately, with the classroom size, uh, we would not be able to accommodate uh, someone younger than seven years old. So um, uh, it, it is a big endeavor to uh, teach someone that young, but uh, mashallah, young, young minds are brilliant and they're able to latch on quickly. So in, in the future, I do hope that we're able to uh, find, uh, have more teachers that will allow us to uh, take on children that are younger age as well. And just to go back a little uh, backtrack about adults, adults are more than welcome to register and participate in this program. And I would actually encourage college students as well um, if, if, they, if they think that they're up for it, they can schedule their classes to have all evening classes and attend this morning session uh, five days a week. I know I had a friend who memorized the entire Quran while he was an undergrad with me at Temple University. So I, I really looked up to him that he was able to manage his time in that way. But if you have a program like this that's uh, facilitating that and you're able to do both uh, studies, by all means, go for it. And adults are more than welcome if they're able to find it conducive to, the, to their schedule as well. Okay. Uh, we have one last question I will take before we move to um, Brother Usama. So the question is, what challenges do you see in regards to being able to manage the time needed for HIPS and the secular education, homework assignments, et cetera? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? I didn't quite yes. catch it. They asked, what challenges do you see in regards to being able to, to manage the time needed for HIPS and the secular education for homework assignments, et cetera? Uh, the, the time needed for homework assignments in, in terms of PALC studies or uh, the assignment from the HIPS class? I think probably just like combining both um, for the HIPS, like they're, what would be required for them to memorize HIPS along with their secular education. Um, they're yeah. saying, what challenges do you see? I think it would, my personal yeah. opinion, I so, would say uh, it's probably time management. So uh, it, it is it is a bit of a challenge for the student to balance both, but it's definitely doable. Uh, we There are plenty of examples out there of uh, Fafav, myself, my brother, uh, and many others that we know that uh, memorize the Quran while continuing their secular education. It is a challenge in terms of balancing everything, and uh, but it's definitely doable if the student's motivated. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah, when it comes to Hufad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends special mercy. I'm not exaggerating here. I, th things that would take me longer to understand, I, I, I am now able to understand it quicker. Uh, even when it came to uh, academic portions such as mathematics, uh, I don't know, It's things began to stick quicker because I had this experience of memorization for uh, geography and so forth, other subjects, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened his gates of mercy and we were able to retain information at a quicker pace when it came to academics as well as with the Quran. 
So you, you notice that this baraka effect that you don't, you don't find in any other science that Allah SWT has a special mercy for the Hufad, that they're able to uh, balance both of these studies. And the, the, especially young children, you'd be surprised that they're, they're, they have such a high capacity of uh, learning and memorizing and being able to uh, balance many things at the same time. I think one thing definitely will be the support of the parents providing that structure in that environment. So really it's going to be a team approach with the HIST program, POUTS with ICRA supporting with that, and then the parents as well play a big role. So just to develop that time and structure for the student on a daily basis yeah. as well as the weekend. Definitely. And, so, for uh, anybody, and the good news that I'll give, uh, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I was just gonna say that um, for anybody who has already applied, you will be get, being contacted to be scheduled to meet with um, Brother Usama on the 20th. I believe he mentioned that he will be, hold, be holding um, interviews on June 20th. So you can look for an email um, confirmation for a time um, coming this week, inshallah. And uh, I want to give the good news that you guys have this program locally. I had to travel out to a boarding school. Um, so I'm sure you've, everyone's heard of Madrasa horror stories, but uh, Alhamdulillah, I had a great experience. But at the same time, being at home, uh, you have access to other comforts and luxuries. So you have a, 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 your families supporting you. You have the Iqra team supporting you. You have a teacher that's supporting you. And, and, and the parents are there to uh, help with both the academic portion and with the uh, portion of, of the program. And Alhamdulillah, we're adopting the uh, the online uh, technology component as well. So uh, the parents are able to play an active role uh, in part participating in the, the student's progress. So I, I don't see it as a challenge, but I, I see that as an opportunity that we're able to, uh, as, uh, as, as we say, get the best of both worlds, be able to pursue your academic career while at the same time pursuing this noble endeavor of memorizing the Quran. MashaAllah. Mashallah. Okay, so at this point, um, keep your questions coming. You can um, continue to put them in the chat and we'll be happy to do our best to um, answer those. But at this time, we're going to move on to um, Ustad Usam, uh, Usam, sorry, uh, Abdullah Bakran, and he's going to discuss with you our longstanding you know, backbone of what started ICRA is the uh, part-time boys HIFS program. He's going to discuss that with you, everybody and then introduce our new girls. Okay, thank you, Sister Nicole. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam wa wa mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, of course, thank you guys for joining the ICRA Academy uh, virtual house. And of course, everyone's eagerness to learn more about our educational programs for yourself and for your children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward all of you for all of your efforts, inshallah. Um, again, my name is Abdullah Bakran, and I'm currently the director of the part-time HIF program since 2016. Um, uh, it's, to, say the very to say the least, it's been a very, very exciting journey from where we were to where we are now. Uh, Alhamdulillah, um, and now expanding and launching our um, full-time program. I know we've been talking about that for years now, and also um, to a girl's part-time program. So this is very, very exciting news, Alhamdulillah, and I'm happy to welcome and work with um, Ustad Osama and Ustad, Ustad Sidr, inshallah. So, um, so to jump in to, to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I grew up in the King of Prussia area, born and raised. I went through the Upper Marion Area School District uh, education system from elementary school all the way to high school. And um, when I was in about ninth grade, uh, I decided to, path, uh, to pursue the path of um, memorizing the Quran. Um, so uh, again, I know you heard it many times in this presentation, at that time there wasn't any um, uh, you know, local opportunities for us to do that. So I had to travel to different cities within the USA um, at a young age and leave my family. So um, some of the cities I went to was in Atlanta, New York, and Chicago. Um, and during that same time, I was able to do the online classes in June 9th and 10th grade. And then I went back to high school in 11th grade. Um, 
So to answer the, uh, some of those questions, it is possible as long as you manage your time properly and you need to have that drive and motivation um, and anything is possible, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes things uh, easy for you. Um, so after high school, I decided, to, uh, I lived in Saudi Arabia for, for a few years. I completed my um, diploma in, in the Arabic language uh, at Umm al University in Mecca. And following that, I completed my bachelor's degree in Sharia from Umm al um, as well, um, University in Mecca. Um, and currently I'm, I'm, I'm now an IT project manager at Marisos Bergen here in Chesterbrook, PA. So uh, the program objectives. Um, again, uh, the program ob objectives here is, is to develop quality hafad for our communities. Um, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمُ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمُ uh, the best of you are those who learn the Quran, memorize the Quran, and teach it. So that's that's what we want to do, of course, with sincerity. Um, that's what we try to do and implement here at our program. Um, uh, again, uh, growing up, uh, even uh, when we were in Ramadan time uh, during uh, Taraweeh, we would have to bring people, not only in the U.S., we had to bring people from overseas. We didn't have any uh, local hafad or uh, hafad within, you know, uh, you know within the US even. So we would bring people from the UK and, and, and other countries. So one of the goals are to, of course, have that full circle, have the student learn, memorize the Quran, um, and eventually teach it as well and pass it on to the to other generations. And of course, um, be able to, you know, you know, facilitate the the the, the masajid with taraweeh and 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 be and 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 kind of benefit the the younger generation in our community here. Um, another, uh, if you can go back to the, the last slide, actually, um, another uh, component is, of course, to create an Islamic environment for our children while attending public schools. That's a very important um, piece of it. Um, uh, so again, this is a, a part-time program. So the majority majority of the time they're in, in, in the public schools and, and kind of around the non-Muslims and, um, and, and not having that kind of Muslim environment or, you know, having those Muslim peers that we that we want. So I remember one of the um, uh, one of the parents uh, uh, who had multiple children uh, mentioned the most important um, point is for them to, to have that environment and give them that um, build those bonds with those Muslim peers and and build those connections and having that environment when they come to Iqra and, and, and talk about Islam and and being able to pray in Jama'ah jama and, and things like this. So that, that's that's a very, very important component, um, I felt, um, in, in these last few years uh, of the program. Um, and of course, uh, the ability to, to be able to recite the Qur'an with um, the proper pronunciation and tajweed rules. So while, you know, they're memorizing the Qur'an, we try to make sure we implement the proper tajweed. Um, so this next slide is very, it's, it's very refreshing and rewarding for me. So if you look at the first picture um, on the top left, this is back in 2016 um, when we when we first launched the program, and and if you see some of those students, they're about a foot shorter than me. Um, and then if you look at the bottom uh, right, uh, the same students are about a foot taller than me. <laughs> so that that's that's very re rewarding and refreshing for myself personally, being able to see the children, um, seeing their uh, you know you know seeing watching them with my own eyes grow into young adults. Um, practicing um, Muslims um, in, in this area and, and subhanAllah like Maad, for example, mashallah and, and some of the other graduates we have have completed the program with us and now are are in the revision phase and and, and kind of we're, we're, we're mentoring them to start teaching and, and also leading Taraweeh. So it's, it's very rewarding for myself. So some of the accomplishments that we have here is um, we have three uh, students that have a uh, uh, graduated, meaning memorized the Quran from start to finish. Um, and to touch up on one of those questions about age limit, um, uh, 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 half of the Iqbal Zaman, mashallah, he, he, he's a full-time father and uh, he had a full-time job and he was able to memorize the whole Quran in a couple of years as a part-time program. Um, it's just a, it's, the, it's a, the motivation, it's the drive the person has. Anything is possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes things easy. Um, he, he used to come uh, to just drop his son Maad off to class um, and, and, and then he decided that he wanted to pursue it as well. So subhanAllah, they both started 
uh, around the same time and both completed around the same time. So mashallah, you know, it is possible. Um, so, and we also have brother uh, half of the Sami who also graduated with us last year, um, who, 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 who finished when he was about 13 or 14 years old. So um, that's uh, very exciting news for, for Iqra um, Academy here. Um, and then we also have three students that are ex expected to complete the Quran in the next few months. One uh, student has about three ajza left. Another student has about four ajza left and, and, and the other student maybe seven or eight. So within a year, we'll have three more graduates. Um, again, and all these, uh, all of the, the, our, our students are full-time um, students in, in, in the public schools, public schools in the local area. Um, and then uh, right now we have about 10 current um, enrolled students in the program. And, you know, it kind of in the last couple of years, it varied from 10 to 15 students. Um, yep. So you can move to the next one. All right. So our program consists of three days and the schedule consists of three days a week. We have every Tuesdays, Thursdays from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And then on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. So this is also going to be the girls um, part time hit program for both boys and girls. Um, so the student expectation during class is it's kind of broken up in three parts. Um, number one, the student will, will recite the new lesson for the day of what, whatever was assigned to them and from the previous class. Um, they'll recite that as soon as they come in. Um, and then they'll recite their revision from the current juz that they're in. So for example, if they're halfway done the 30th juz, then they will, say, they will recite their new lesson and then we'll have them recite from the very beginning of juz, uh, from the beginning of the juz, from Surat the Naba. And then the third uh, piece of that is uh, they will recite the revision of the previously memorized ajza. So if they have five ajza memorized or seven ajza memorized, um, they will recite, depending on the student's level, um, either half a juz, a quarter of, of the juz, or, or a full juz. And uh, just a touch point, uh, you know, we don't have as much classroom time as the full-time program. So uh, it's very, it's imperative for the, the students to be able to recite at home as much as possible. The more time you give to the Quran, the more results you'll get and more success you'll get. So it's it's imperative for the for the parents to be very involved, um, and um, and 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 that was a difference between the success of our current students in this last couple of years. I've seen um, the environment that they have at home, the support that they have from the parents is a different uh, is the uh, the difference between a successful student to complete the and achieve their goal of memorizing the whole Quran. And then the eligibility, of course, is similar to what um, uh, Hafid Osama mentioned. Again, um, you know, the standard is eight years old plus. We can make some exceptions depending on the maturity level. But again, um, you know, the, the, the student is required to be able to sit, um, sit down um, uh, and memorize and study independently for a number of hours. Um, so sometimes younger students aren't able to do that. Um, and then the ability to have the basics of being able to uh, memorize, read the Quran and recite the Quran fluently and have some basics of, of the Tajweed rules. Um, and of course, we will be teaching that them and improving that, that throughout the program. Um, and yes. So, uh, so Jazakumullah Khair. Uh, and you, if you guys have any questions, I encourage everyone, of course, to enroll in the program. Um, and if you have any questions, you can reach out to, to uh, Iqra or myself, and we would be happy, happy to, to answer anything, any questions from you guys. So I'll pass it on to now the, um, alhamdulillah, the new uh, instructor, the new team member of Iqra, who will be launching our uh, part-time um, girls HIFT program, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi Shahri Sadri wa Yassir li Amri wa Hlul Qutam li Lisani yafqahu qawli. Um, Assalamu alaikum to everyone who's watching. Jazakallah khairan for joining us today. I am immensely blessed to be part of this uh, Iqra Academy initiative for the girls part-time hivs. Um, I, like the other Hafad over here as well, had to travel uh, to complete my hiv. I had been memorizing um, a little bit as I was a child, but I really, really got into it when I was in high school. And so I did it in, um, I completed half, alhamdulillah, in Canada. So we had to travel from Boston, um, where I'm originally from. And, um, but things didn't work, but alhamdulillah, I was able to finish it when we came back. 
Um, currently, I am pursuing my bachelor's degree in psychology communication with a minor in sociology. This uh, year will be my last year. Um, I completed a diploma in Arabic language from the Marcus Taiba here in Medina. I've been here for a year, alhamdulillah, and honestly, it's it's been life-changing. Um, a lot of people, you know, they come here for Umrah, for Hajj, and like, oh, I wish I could live here. And if you get an opportunity to, I would definitely urge you to, because the way they, they and, and learn Quran here as well, um, the way they emphasize tajweed and makharij, it's, it's completely next level. And my aim, inshallah, with the new Girls Hips program is to embody that as well and to um, give that spirit that I've learned from here, of learning Quran with that passion, with that dedication and commitment into the girls as well. Um, it, it's a known factor that, you know, the mother is the first university of a child. And if we equip uh, the next generation of girls with the information and the you know, um, everything, uh, learning, um, I'm sorry, learning the Quran and the information of what it means and the tafsir and the tajweed and everything, they can impart that knowledge to future generations and that can become as a means of sadaqah jariya for them as well. I'll definitely try to um, take what I learned from here and teach those to my children as well. Um, if you we can go back to the previous slide. Um, I, current, I also studied uh, Islamic studies in the Dar al Ulum online and um, the, Arabic th the Arabic program over here, alhamdulillah, it was very, very comprehensive and um, I was able to like gain a more understanding. And I firmly believe that when a child is learning the Quran, um, it shouldn't just be, you know, a series of sounds. It, it should be with meaning, with understanding. So I, I myself, with my uh, future uh, students, inshallah, will be trying to you know, guide them in terms of understanding the translation so they can have a holistic picture and understanding of the Quran as well so that they know what they're memorizing and that they can learn from what they're memorizing as well and, and you know, change their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life as well, inshallah. So not only have that memorization as a skill, but also to be able to become a more stronger and practical Muslim in this contemporary time, inshallah. And I'm very, very, very excited. And uh, please do let us know if you have any questions. And we'll be uh, more than welcome to answer them, inshallah. MashaAllah. Welcome, Sister um, Sidra. Welcome, Ustaz Usama. We are so excited to get these programs off the ground and to launch them. And really, just to, um, you know, as a woman and as a mother to a girl, I'm all for, you know, girl education. I'm all for um, the empowering girls, especially um, uh, when it comes to Islam. So we are so excited to get this program off the ground. If I'm going to take a look to the chat to see if we have any questions. Um, a question I have here is how many teachers you have for the part-time program? Um, would you like to answer that, Abdullah, or? Yeah, so currently we have um, three instructors. Um, so depending uh, on the timing, uh, we, we, we currently have two, like, um, I guess, teaching assistants as well and, and two um, instructors. So I, I would say a total of four right now to help out. So depending on the amount of students enrolled at one given time, um, you know, that depends on the instructors that we have at our program. Mm -hmm. And I would also say, I mentioned to the community, um, as the program grows, then of course we will accommodate the community. Um, that has always been our effort is to, you know, find qualified instructors. And um, as our need has grown, we have, in, have alhamdulillah been able to um, find instructors and to grow as well to meet the community demand. Um, I do have another question for, somebody an adult looking to join the part-time program is there any criteria that would be different um than what you would be looking for for say um the, a younger student um i would say no um just the main thing is of course the the the, the commitment level as long as they're able to commit to the timings and and and, and be able to kind of keep up with everything um, then, then there's really no difference in, um, uh, in, in, in requirements. 
Um, like I said, we had um, one of our students uh, who finished with us was was a full time. Uh, he worked full time, and he was still able to, you know. But he would be very dedicated as long he was every day, every day here and reading, um, and that's just the main the main requirement. You know, the commitment level needs to be there. Um, we can't have someone coming, um, you know, every couple of weeks. It's it's tough for us to be able to accommodate that. All right. And one final question um, for the part time hips. Is it mandatory that you memorize or can you come to the program to learn how to read with uh, proper Tajweed and you mentioned Makarish, like, or, or is it mandatory that you have to memorize? Um, that's a good question. And, you know, every verse is a blessing to have memorized, right? So we don't, like, we don't necessarily require them, okay, if you can't, do uh, you can't memorize from start to finish you're not you know you can't enroll into the program no that's not the case we look at it from a blessing from ourselves and sadaqa um, jari for ourselves if we can teach a student ayah to memorize um, and then they can keep, retain that um, that would be our goal so we have some students um, that may not necessarily want to complete it but you know maybe they their goal is to memorize 10 ajza. maybe their goal is to memorize five maybe they just want to do just amma um, you know, so we are we are completely okay with that. That's why you know we we accommodate all of those students that want to do that. Okay, great, mashallah, mashallah. So um, I don't have any other questions. If there's anything else you guys would want to add, then I will jump right into the um, admissions process um, and how parents can join. So basically, with both with uh, all three programs you would visit our website at ikrainstitute.org and all of the ad, um, applications and registrations are up and available online. Um, for the full-time HIPS program, there is an application fee of $75. Once you have registered your student and paid that fee, then I will be in contact with you to set up um, the next step, which would be the interview process with uh, Usted Usama. Um, from there, from his evaluation, um, whether you, if you are accepted into the program, he will let me know. I will send ad, um, admissions confirmation. And along with that, you will receive your financial contract with the um, fees listed. So you have your technology fee, supply fee. Um, at that time, those fees will be due for payment. And what that will do is solidify and hold your, your placement for that program. If you are doing the PALPS enrollment from the moment that you are accepted, then you must apply for PALPS ASAP. Um, especially with the pandemic, with COVID-19 going on, they are expecting an influx of um, online learning applications. So with PALPS, usually the process with them is that you will submit all your paperwork, documentation, um, for your student, once they receive all that, then they will set you up with an orientation. You will attend that orientation. From that point, uh, you will then, uh, that basically solidifies your enrollment into PALPS, and then they will issue you all of your materials, laptop, headphones, printer, uh, books, and materials that go along depending on what grade you're entering. So that is of the utmost importance because the later you wait, the later it takes for your materials to come. So then if you don't have your online materials that you need, then you're not able, you're behind in the class already. So um, that is the process for the HIPS program. And again, the tuition for with PALCs included is 6,500 for the HIPS only is 4,500. Um, and then moving to the girls and boys part-time HIPS program, there is no um, registration or application fee for that because uh, your admission is based on your, um, your uh, interview and your evaluation. So you would just go online, you would apply there, and then I would contact you and then set up um, an evaluation with Usaid uh, Abdullah or Seda Sidra and then you will go from there. Now, with if we're full-time, as um, Usted Usama had mentioned, there is the summer intensive, so either you can opt into that or it might be mandatory. Otherwise, school session starts in um, September. 
for the boys part-time HIFS program, once you apply, once you have your evaluation, you are um, automatically, you can start right away. For the girls um, HIFS program, that will be up and running September. So we're just laying the groundwork for that, getting everybody um, ready and situated for the September for the girls uh, part-time program. So just to be aware that both the full-time program and the girls HIF program will begin in September. But the boys HIF program, we have a summer session that is currently um, in session right now, and you can go right away into that program. Um, so the fee for the part-time program is $195 per month, and that we do offer a 10% discount with any siblings that do come in. Um, so I will take one more quick look at the um, chat. And uh, the question is, what is the maximum class size? Um, for, I don't, um, Usa, uh, Usted, Usama, you can answer. You did say that there was a cap for the program, for the full-time program, if you wanted to answer for that program. So the ideal class size would be a maximum, maximum, I'd say of 10 students. Uh, because we do have restricted time of listening to each student's new lesson. They're, all, all the components takes a good amount of time, especially if students are studying half a juz of revision uh, or even just two juz of, of revision. Uh, we would need to have a classroom size of less than 10 students, inshallah, okay, ideally. Awesome. And um, Ustad Abdullah, um, I, don't, I don't believe that you guys have a limit, but if you would like to elaborate on that, I'm sorry, a limit of uh, amount of students? Yes. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, we do not have a limit. Um, uh, the more students we have, then the, maybe the more um, instructors we would include. Um, and sometimes uh, with, more, when, with more students, we would have two instructors uh, in a given class. So it all depends, but we don't, we don't cap it out. Um, uh, you know, again, we would have more instructors, but you know, to facilitate more students. Okay. And then one other question I'm seeing here, it says, so if an adult enrolls, would they sit in the same classroom as the children? Yes, a student, I mean, uh, yeah, because we have one, it, it's, we basically like sit in the masala area. So, um, you know, I, the, the instructors and the students and, and the adults are all, all in the same area. So that would be a similar setup. And I think too, as um, Usted Usama mentioned, it's very, and as you mentioned too, Abdul, it's very self-guided, self-paced. So while um, the instructor would be with one student, then it would be your responsibility to be listening or doing your recitation on by yourself, basically. So I don't think, like they shouldn't fear that it's, yeah. you know. I mean, adults. Yeah. It's not contained in that one specific area. So if a, the adult wants to sit in a separate area of the musallah, knowing that they are responsible um, for their own, because they are responsible adults, uh, they would have the op option to sit in a separate area to uh, feel a bit more at ease if they want to use that option. Right. But the kids, uh, if the children, they would be closer to the teacher, so we're able to monitor a bit better. Yes. And also, um, before we go into the closing remarks and our closing dua, I just wanted to share that although this open house was primarily for um, our new um, and ongoing HIVS program, for the um, person that inquired for their five-year-old, um, I would encourage you, we're going to have another open house um, in July where we're going to feature all of our programs. And we have a couple amazing programs going on. We have our full-time um, regular school programming and that we do Quran, Arabic, Islamic studies. Um, so it might be nice to put your five-year-old in that program just to give them, you know, a head start. We also have our after-school program, um, which they could would qualify for as well. So you have either a full-time or a part-time option for that as well to prepare them and lead them if you're um, 
if your expectation or your um, desire is to go into the HIPS program. And that's one of the beauties that we have tried to also develop at ICRA is that we have one program that inshallah will lead into the next. So um, this year we had our little Dean Seekers, which is for our little, little guys, you know, up to age four. And they are starting out with like reading, um, learning duas and that type of thing, just to really um, solidify their adab and their, you know, relationship um, with Islam. So from that program, you can either go to the full time or you can go into after school. From after school, you can either go to full time HIFS now or to the part time HIFS. So alhamdulillah, each program leads right into the other. So yeah. if, um, if these programs don't, don't work for a five year old, we have definitely other options for you. Yes, and, and that to just elaborate a little bit on that, uh, there were um, a, a number of students that came to me that were maybe five, six years old, and, and I evaluated them. They were still a little bit young. Um, so we helped, we, we kind of um, guided them to the after school program where they were able to kind of build that foundation with, uh, with that program with Arabic and with uh, the ability to read and, and kind of memorize the basics. And, and then they transitioned later on to the HIPP program. So um, that's definitely an option. Like if we, if they're not eligible to start with our, uh, you know, HIF programs, we can certainly facilitate them to start at a, at one of our after ICRA after school programs and then transition into the other programs, like you said. Okay. And then I also wanted to mention um, our full-time program, our regular full-time school. Um, we do do um, Quran and Arabic, it's not on the same intensity that this HIPS program would be. So just to be aware of that, they but they are still uh, learning Quran, they're learning to read um, and all that. So it's you're still getting that same Islamic component to it, just not at a higher intensity of what um, the new program would be. And so I'll take one final look and then we'll close out with Usted Usama with our closing dua. Um, so you're asking about um, the school if it's without HIFS. So our full-time program um, for the elementary is 5,000. For the tuition fees are 500 activity fee, um, $100 for supply fee, $50 for technology fee. That's our regular full-time school. Um, if you have a pre-K student, then the tuition, I believe, is seven thousand um, for the year, and that program runs from September to May. Um, also, the registration for all of our programs are open. I encourage you to really visit our website, take a look, read um, our instructors' bios, read about our program descriptions. Um, again, my my email, my phone number is scrolling across the bottom, so you can reach out. Um, at any time, I'd be happy to help you in any way I can. So at this time, um, Usted Usama, if you could close us out with our dua. Before I uh, start the dua, I just want everyone to uh, take a moment and uh, pray for those that are going through trials and tribulations regarding the COVID situation all around the world. We all know someone that's been impacted someone that's been, uh, someone that has contracted the disease and uh, some family and some some member of our, someone we know has been impacted by this, uh, this devastating tragedy. So we asked, just just a couple hours ago, I was given the news that my mother's best friend in Pakistan, uh, her husband passed away. So it's it's a difficult, it's it's difficult situation all around the world. We ask Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate uh, this calamity and allow us to come out from it stronger Oh yeah, Allah, the Almighty, the All Forgiving. Oh yeah, Allah, forgive us of our sins. Oh yeah, Allah, remove us from this difficulty. Ya yeah, Allah, remove us from this calamity. Allahumma rfa anna hadal waba. Ya Rabb al alamin. Ya Arham al rahimin. Allahumma kshif anna hadal waba. Ya Arham al rahimin. Allahumma rfa anna hadal waba. Ya Arham al rahimin. Allahumma habib ilayna al iman. Wa zayinhu fi qulubina. Wa karrih ilayna al kura wal fusuqa wal asyan. اللهم اجعلنا من الراشدين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا المتقين إماما ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا المتقين إماما 
ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا المتقين إماما Oh Ya Allah, we have gathered on this blessed day for your sake, Ya Allah, to come closer to you by putting our children into programs to worship you, Ya Allah, to come closer to Ya Allah, to learn about your deen, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we gathered here on this day for your sake to learn more about programs and to create awareness about your deen, Ya Allah. Make our children on the straight path, Ya Allah. Protect them from going astray, Ya Allah. Protect us from going astray. Ya Allah, in these difficult times, make our families more united. Ya Allah, in these difficult times, make us closer to one another. Ya Allah, we are closer in proximity to one another, spending more time with one another more than ever before. Ya Allah, put baraka and your rahmah in that so that we come closer to one another and let this, let this not be a means of us fighting and uh, becoming distant from one another. Ya Allah, make us emotionally strong. Ya Allah, make us spiritually strong. Ya Allah, make us closer to you. Ya Allah, accept all of our endeavors. Ya Allah, accept all of the sacrifices of all those responsible of putting these programs together. Ya Allah, there's a team working behind the curtains dedicated for your cause. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, bless them and increase them in their iman, increase them in their istiqamah, and increase them in their istiqamah and their ability to build programs for the entire community to, for all of us to benefit. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Grant us Jannatul Firdaus Al-A'la. Ya Allah, grant us Jannatul Firdaus Al-A'la. Ya Allah, this, 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 this world is a test and you are the only one that will make this test easy and grant us victory in it. Ya Allah, we, we ask you for Jannatul Firdaus Al-A'la. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman nafi'a wa amalan saliha wa rizqan tayyiba wa shifa'a min kulli da'a. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. ربنا لا تبز قلوبنا بعد الهديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعافة والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو فعل أو عمل اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو فعل أو عمل اللهم صل على محمد وصلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون سلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله خير أحسن جزاء thank you all for joining in uh, may Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept all of your intentions uh, make may Allah سبحانه وتعالى make us all sincere in our endeavors make us all uh, amongst those who choose, make this uh, make the decisions based on what is most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kitab Allahi Dusturi Kitab Allahi Dusturi Wa khayrul khalqi uswatuna Sunnatihim jala nuri بهدي الحق أرشدنا كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا بسنته الجلا نوري بهدي الحق أرشدنا كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I want to get once again thank everyone for uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, I hope that uh, your questions were answered. I want to thank as well all as all of the staff and instructors that put time and effort into their presentations. Uh, a couple of just quick announcements uh, in closing. Um, July twelfth, we're going to be having an open, an actual in person open house at two p.m. at the facility. Uh, again, that's July twelfth. It's a Sunday at two p.m. And um, all of the programs are going to be featured. All the teachers and instructors that were here today, inshallah, will be there. Um, we're going to also be featuring, again, the, the full-time uh, secular, regular full-time Islamic school, uh, as well as the after-school program and Little Dean Seekers. Uh, so please come and try to attend that as well. And lastly, um, there were a few questions regarding the COVID-19 coronavirus uh, situation and how our facility is going to accommodate uh, for the upcoming ap academic year starting in September. Um, currently, the facility is open for daily prayers as well as Jummah with uh, limitations. 
Um, and in September, inshallah, our plan is to follow uh, what's recommended by the CDC guidelines in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, we are planning, we have different options in place that we have as contingencies, but our goal is to have uh, in some sort of in-person uh, uh, instruction for all of our programs. Um, again, following the CDC safety guidelines, um, but we're put, we have a committee in place that are going over those different uh, plans. And when we get closer to the ac actual school year of starting, um, the detailed plans will be sent out to all the uh, families that are enrolled in the programs, inshallah. But at the very least, if any, uh, we definitely have different options. And at the very least, um, if something gets worse than where it is today, uh, we would be having virtual instruction. That's what we did uh, during these last few months. So um, again, everything is continuing, um, whether it's a hybrid approach, whether it's full-time in-person instruction or whether it's full-time virtual, inshallah, everything will be proceeding. And uh, again, um, if you have any other further questions on this, please uh, you know, contact Sister Nicole um, or I'll call our phone line and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Again, uh, we thank you for coming and uh, inshallah, we'll see you at the next one. Assalamu alaikum. كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا لسنته جلا نوري لهدي الحق أرشدنا كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا لسنته جلا نوري لهدي الحق أرشدنا كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا بسنته جلا نوري لهدي الحق أرشدنا لزمت محاضن القرآن فذكر الله يسعدنا عرفنا إخوة الإيمان وللأخيار صحبتنا تميزنا بكل الفن وتجمعنا محبتنا وصدق القول نعرفه وخير الخلق يعرفنا تعالينا على الأحقاد مع المخطي تسامحنا تنافسنا بحفظ الآي وهذا ما يميزنا كتاب الله دستوري بسنته جلا نوري لهدي الحق أرشدنا كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا بسنته جلا نوري لهدي الحق أرشدنا